This country invented wine, bread, and Joseph Stalin. Nestled between the crossroads of Europe and Asia lies one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Despite its rich history, delicious food, vibrant culture, breathtaking landscapes, and iconic architecture, it remains one of the most underrated destinations on the planet. This is Georgia. This place has blown my mind, and after traveling all throughout the country for the past four months, I'm going to share with you the most amazing places that you should definitely add to your bucket list. Our adventure begins in the capital city of Tbilisi. If you're flying into Georgia, your first stop is likely going to be the largest as well as the capital city, which is Tbilisi. Tbilisi was originally founded in the 5th century and is one of the oldest cities in all of Europe. Legend has it that an old king stumbled across the sulfur baths, which he believed had magical healing properties, and decided to locate the capital city of the nation right there. And the word Tbilisi is roughly derived from the words warm and waters. And just like the king, you can still enjoy the healing properties of these sulfur baths and what better place than Trelli Abano. This is one of the most iconic and beautiful structures in all of Tbilisi, where you can book a room and bathe in the hot sulfur baths. It's an extremely unique experience and highly recommend. Just above the sulfur baths lie the ancient fortress of Narikala, which is free to enter and roam around. Here you have the best views of the city of Tbilisi, where you can see the impact uh, from the Arabs, the Persians, and other influences in this area. From the fortress, you can also see our next destination, which is the Holy Trinity Cathedral. This is actually a somewhat modern structure, but it's one of the most beautiful churches I've ever seen in my life. First of all, it's massive, and it's built in the unique Georgian style that you won't see anywhere else. Georgia was actually one of the first nations in the world to adopt Christianity as its main religion, and to this day, Christianity is an extremely integral part of Georgian culture. If you talk to many Georgians, they will tell you there are two things you do not mess with in Georgia. First is the food, and second is the church. Speaking of history, you can see the story of Georgia carved into massive stone tablets at the Chronicles of Georgia monument just outside of the city. The Chronicles are a massive stone structure that display the iconic Georgian stone carving technique and various important moments throughout Georgian history on each tablet, and Georgians are not morning people. So if you get up early, there's a good chance you'll be the only one at the Chronicles, and when the sun is rising and shining through, it's magical. It feels like you're teleported to another world. Definitely recommend. Okay, now I think we've spent enough time in Tbilisi. Moving to the eastern side of the country, we arrive in the region known as Kheti. This used to be a kingdom and is the birthplace of wine where the oldest wine artifacts on the planet are found here in this region. Georgian wine is very unique from other wines you might find in France or Italy and other countries because it's actually fermented in these large terracotta pots just like they did thousands of years ago, which give it more of a minerally taste. I'm actually a huge fan of Georgian white dry wine and if you're a wine lover, you definitely need to come to this region and go to one of the wine caves that are here in the area. We personally visited the Kavreli Wine Cave and had a great time. And when in Kakheti, you must stop at the City of Love, also known as Signagi. This is a beautiful old village that is perched atop this hill with beautiful views of the lush wine valleys below mountains all around you, and you're actually very, very close to the Russian and Azerbaijan borders, which is just so cool. In the city, you can stroll the beautiful streets, sample some more wine, and also walk along the old walls that protected the city from invaders for hundreds of years. Heading north, we arrive at the Old King's Palace, as well as an important trading village on the Silk Road that is now known as Gremi's Archangel Palace. So it's this very kind of small complex. There's a few different buildings on it, including one of the most beautiful churches I've ever seen in my life. Not just on the outside, which looks like this cool fairy tale, like castle almost, 
but the inside has some of the most beautiful old frescoes I've ever seen. And I've been in quite a few churches. So a really great stop. And just the short drive up the road, we arrive at another impressive structure known as Necresi Monastery. So before Christianity became dominant in Georgia, the entire country as a whole used to engage in pagan sun worship. And that's why to this day, in some different areas like restaurants or even on the backs of Georgian coins, the Georgian lari, you will see symbols of the sun, which date back thousands of years to sun worship. Now, specifically, where Necresi Monastery was built used to be a site of actual human sacrifice to worship the sun god. Then when Christianity came in, they specifically built the monastery to kind of dominate over the pagan religion. And today it's an extremely beautiful and very peaceful monastery. In my opinion, it has the best views of the wine valley below. Allie and I went in the late spring and the vineyards were the most lush green I've ever seen. Very similar actually feeling to Costa Rica of all places. Just another beautiful region of Georgia. If you've ever done a Google image search of the country of Georgia, you've likely seen this church pop up. This is Gurgetti Trinity Church. And after traveling to 33 countries so far, this church and landscape are one of the most beautiful I've ever seen anywhere. It's located in the Kazbegi region in Northern Georgia, right on the Russo-Georgian border. And here you'll find horses roaming in the valleys below, the white snow-capped Caucasus Mountains in the distance. It's insane and definitely worth putting on your bucket list. If you are driving up to Kazbegi, you will likely pass by this colorful and interesting monument right off the side of the road. This is known as Friendship Monument to commemorate the friendship and alliance between Russia and Georgia. But I guess Russia forgot about this when they invaded in 2008. Regardless, it's still a beautiful structure surrounded by beautiful landscapes and the whole drive up is just incredible. By now, you're probably thinking that mountains, valleys, and old buildings are all that Georgia has to offer. And that could not be further from the truth. Georgia is also home to nearly 200 miles of coastline on its western edge. And its biggest and fastest growing seaside city is Batumi. Originally built by the Greeks who traded with the ancient Georgians along the Black Sea, Batumi is now known as the Vegas of the Black Sea due to the number of casinos, but there is so much more to do and see in this city than just gambling. Batumi was actually my personal favorite place to stay in Georgia. I like being there a lot more than spending time in Tbilisi, although both are beautiful and very different in their own ways. Batumi has a much better climate, more relaxed and chill, and really beautiful with the palm trees and the seaside and sunsets. Great for swimming, strolling the cool and quirky streets, and has some of the best food in all of Georgia, including Kachapuri Arjani, which actually originated in the region that Batumi is located. So 100% have to visit if you're coming to Georgia. Just south of Batumi, you can literally swim along the Turkish-Georgian border at Sarpi Beach. On one side, you have a literal mosque, and on the other, you have the traditional Orthodox church. Just such an interesting place to be, and it's specifically known for cliff jumping, which I'm a big fan of. And if you get there right around sunset, you'll have some of the most beautiful sunsets you may have ever seen in your life. Out of the 33 countries we've been to, the sunsets we had in Sarpy Beach were in our top five most beautiful of all time. Just such a cool, beautiful, underrated place. And last, but certainly not least, we moved to the northwest corner of Georgia to the Spanetti region. Nested right within the Caucasus Mountains, this region has historically been the most remote and isolated from the rest of Georgia. And what this region is most known for are the extremely unique medieval watchtowers that are scattered throughout the mountains and valleys all the way through, some dating back to the 1200s. And at the heart of the Spanetti region is the most beautiful, magical village you'll ever see, which is known as Ushkuli. It's a medieval village located in the center of the Nguri Gorge, right alongside a river with massive snow-capped mountains right in the distance, rolling green hills all around, and numerous beautiful 
medieval watchtowers. I've never seen any other place on earth even look remotely similar to this. You feel like you're in like a video game or a movie, magical, just like the rest of Georgia. I'm literally at a loss for words for how beautiful this country is. It's also much safer than many other countries, including the United States where I'm from. And I'm curious, which of these places piqued your interest the most? Let me know in the comment section below to see which one is the most popular. And keep in mind that Ali and I have full travel vlogs going through the entire destination for everything I listed here. And we'll be linking those videos in the description section here below. Bottom line, add Georgia to your bucket list today. You won't regret it. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and I look forward to seeing you in the next adventure. And until then, nakvam dis.